You're involved in quite a few things. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're actually doing at the moment? Um, well, I'm pianist and cellist, um, building up my music business, um, which is private teaching, piano from home. And I'm also involved in an orchestra, so I'm in the De Havilland Philharmonic Orchestra playing cello. I used over in Hatfields, uh, Hopsha University campus. So yeah, it's really good stuff at the moment, really enjoying that. Tell me, where did you get this kind of like, you know, influence to become a musician? My family's quite musical. Um, my mum taught herself to play piano and uh, I've got an older brother who's, um, he started playing piano as well and I sort of followed him from him. He's sort of given up now, but he's doing other things. But um, yeah, I it's I think I've got really my parents to thank for um, my sort of musical output and things because if I hadn't had piano lessons, then obviously I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I'm based in St Albans, and I live in a little village. Oh, I thought it was Albans. Bath. I'm <laughs> so sorry. I thought you lived in Bath. Why do you like sitting in a stand? Bath is a good place, though. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah. It's a lovely place. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> I don't know if it's as good as St Albans, but. Um, My name is Jeremy, I'm from South London, um, I'm a recording artist and also I like to think of myself as a social entrepreneur. Um, a little bit about myself, um, I teach dance, I teach drama to young people, I run a dance company, or well, I perform an arts company actually, um, and I do music and I w I've worked with a lot of different companies. So what kind of music do you do? Um, I do, I call it alternative pop, so it's, um, it's music to make you dance. All my music, no matter what happens, you'll dance, you'll hear it and you'll move. Something will make you move inside of it, so um, I make alternative pop. You can also check out my performing arts company called childofzion.co.uk, coming very soon. I've been working with young people since, for eight years, since the age of like 15, 14, I started teaching. And um, I just galvanised a lot of young people and just started teaching them like dance and performance. Um, with the view to uh, just kind of like encourage a positive atmosphere because I was dancing a lot around that time, around that period and I was just going to all these groups and it was like it's just not a good atmosphere so then um, I wanted to create a good vibe for myself and for other people that are like-minded so, so I put on a musical when I was about 17 Wow, um, I was pretty young <laughs> yeah. So you're a bit of an entrepreneur at the end of the day as well, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, that's, awesome. that's what I'm trying to be Oh, you're going to like what I've done, and it's going to show another side of me. I hear you want to say, well, people might consider this to be quite gay, but it's not. It's something that's quite cathartic. Right. So yeah, I've uh, already washed up here. This is dedicated. I'm demonstrating why it's not cool not to clean. Okay? <laughs> so it's cool to clean, not cool not to clean. Okay? Basically, simple. Now, you know, most of the reasons why is simply because girls, they don't put up with that stuff anymore. They used to, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, maybe when I was growing up, they didn't mind so much. But now, whew, girls don't take it, you know, they don't like an uncle, unclean guy. So uh, I'm trying to show that I'm, I've learned the perfect skills which are needed to obviously, should I say, when I say the word of ours, or when I say attract the perfect woman, um, and it's basically cleaning. So. Yeah, I'm cleaning the kitchen, you know, so, you know, for example, you've got this wonderful sexy girl coming back. You don't want to come in debt back to your house or your flat and it's a dump and it's got hair everywhere, you know, and it looks like crap, you know, which is pretty much how this place looked before I started cleaning it. So, uh, as you can see, dustbin full of rubbish, bucket there, you know, there's nothing better for, or what they would say, uh, nothing more amorous than um, come into a nice, clean, beautiful, pristine, you know, if it's white, it's white, good on you, but if it's not white, you know, what the hell, um, property or flat uh, with a gorgeous girl, woman, wife, whoever you want to call her, um, Mrs. Blah, 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 and, you know, just setting the scene, you know, well, you don't want this, do you? Certainly not. Um, and you don't want that, you don't want that, you don't want that. All my creativity is inspired by God, inspired by life, wow. inspired by other people living their life. Um, I've always liked to think of myself as someone that's kind of smart. I learn from other people's mistakes. So um, I had a lot of friends that are older than me. 
so on my I learned a lot from what they were doing and the mistakes they made and um yeah it encouraged me inspired me so what does community actually mean to you can you define it community to me is everyone in your local environment so um when you walk out of your house who is there and to me that is what community is um and that is not necessarily just about young people, it's about adults, it's about children, it's about old people as well. My focus, my attention is on young people, being a young person myself. Um, so when I talk about community, that's how I think of it. Um, just the areas that you tap into and who is around you. You know, even if you go to work, who's around you at work, that's the community in itself as well. Um, the wider sense of community has been lost in a way. Like the community, people talk about community spirit, don't they? And, you know, being able to, to meet people that you've not met before and getting to know them and thinking about how you can help them out you know if you see someone struggling you know are you the sort of person that's going to go and help them or are you going to watch them struggle so um i mean i'm i'm like to think to myself that i'm i'm quite you know sort of good in the community spirit sort of sense of things and that i like to help other people out i mean currently at the moment i'm helping someone out um with her illustration stuff, completely non-music related, but I'm writing children's book sort of series. Um, she's a really great illustrator. She's a lot of quirky drawings and things. So I'm sort of helping her get her stuff out there. Um, so yeah, it's sort of helping different people and and helping them get along in life. Hi, could you tell us your name and what your profession is? My name's Kevin O'Dowd. Um, I trained as a specialist decorator, but I now do fashion. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us on MATV. Um, we're just interested in knowing a little bit more about you and give our viewers the opportunity to just get to know you a bit more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I was getting those people squirting him. You tap razor. <laughs> Alright, darling, how are you? Sorry. That's okay. They're, 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 she's the tap lady. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Sorry. She sounds hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> On music, I, I, I couldn't give advice. You know, my, my brother's a musician, obviously, like, and he's very successful. And I would, I would probably say um, to do a local government course, you know, okay. in music production or something, <coughs> yeah. first foundation course, because they're free. Maybe. But with fashion, I would, I would try and get, um, I would try and get a, a placement with, a, okay. with, with, with someone. Me personally, if I had the chance, yeah. as I self-taught, I would have gone with someone like Philip Tracy. Because, oh, okay. yeah. because of the artistry in, in what he does. Yeah. Well, my mum my mum taught us how to cook when we were five. We were cooking oh. for breakfast and stuff. When we were five, we taught her to cook, clean, sew, wash, do wow. anything. You know, it's like being, like, you know, that's the coolest thing my mum ever did. You know? My mum used to be a dressmaker. Oh, okay. And so when George was like, you know, like a teenager and he wanted to dress up with that boy and stuff, he could like draw it for her and she could make it. Wow, oh, that's so, amazing. And I got into, in, into it that way by, by watching my mum. They wouldn't let me into art school. I don't know, how come? I don't know. They said, <laughs> that's um, terrible. I wasn't good enough, obviously. <laughs> well, you obviously proved them wrong. There's all this talk about fair trade and stuff like that. Yeah. Make it your flipping self. <laughs> We've been doing it for years. She inspired me to do what I wanted to do. I write as well. Oh, brilliant. But because I have a um, it's called Asperger's, I can read, but I can't spell. So that was another thing at school. They said I didn't do English. But then I did three years at the ICA called my daisy. So, oh, that's you know, good. But then I could pull you that because it's all, again, politics. I don't like going in the mainstream. When you go in the mainstream, you tend to, you have to fit in. Yeah. And I don't fit in. With, with their idea of poetry, it's like, you know, number here is a fool. Oh, that and the love. It's not really made. <laughs> a dog, <laughs> you're stupid. Sorry, because you can kick a dog and it'll come back to you. Kick a cat and it'll scratch you. So I like cats. <laughs> okay, I like that. If you believe in something, yeah. then go for it. Yeah. You know, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Because um, the, most, like, the most inventive people in the world ever were all people that were said it couldn't be done. That's it.